What's up, my man? Mike, how are you doing? How are you? Pretty good. Hey, hey, how's it going? What's up, Mike? Scott, nice, nice to meet you, my man. If you don't fake it, then you're cool. I was this close to bringing my uh, um, Oaxaca shirt, actually. Ah, uh -huh. Should have worn it. I don't know if you've ever seen one before. No. Traditional shirt that they wear over in uh, in Oaxaca, the yeah. Zapotistas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, well, Zapotistas. I'm sorry, I'm mixing up mixing up my people. Exactly. Yeah. But okay. um, but yeah, they 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 wear the traditional kind of uh, it's like a pattern shirt. It's really nice, beautiful shirt. But I was like, uh, it was a little. It, it's kind of like thicker. Yeah. And I was worried because it was humid. I was like, I was is it on. cotton? Is it what fabric? Um, it's made out of wool, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, with, but I thought it was going to be a cool thing to wear. Yeah. Like I said, I was just like, ah, it's just too humid. In Mexico, especially in Oaxaca, yeah. it's hot. Yeah. But there's yeah. no humidity. Right, so right. you could wear that. Yeah. And as long as you're it's like. It's going to wick off and. 100%. Away. Yeah. 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 Wool yeah. actually uh, cools you down. But when it's humid, you know, humid out, it just like sits in there. Yes. I love wool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and then in summer. I'm yeah. Then. It's nice stuff. I love what you're wearing <laughs> right there, actually. Yeah. But uh, what, what do you do, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I work at uh, SRAM. It's a bicycle park company. Oh, cool. Okay. And then I work in a group that we do uh, like automation of um, factory machines, but then also like development test machines for development developing. test machines. So it's like uh, that sounds as we're designing new parts. Okay. It's like machines that help us gotcha. analyze the designs. I thought it was like the Terminator or something yeah, right. like that. <laughs> Soon, right? I work for Skynet. Yes, I work oh, for Space. Cool. It won't be long. Yeah. No military applications for us. Yeah, that's hilarious. Well, not today. Not well, today. Well, actually, there was, um, that was a big thing, like a two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, what was it? Somebody, they were touting it, and we're like, this is not good. They're yeah. one of our major customers. But, sure, sure. Um, we... There was definitely pushback on us, and like, I'm this sure. is not good <laughs> yeah. to be to be doing this. <laughs> I totally get it. Yep. Are we going already? I'm assuming we're we're, we're we're rocking and rolling. Okay. I like how it's just kind of like transitioned right yes, in. Right. I wasn't sure if the cameras were on. I just like you know what we'll, we'll yeah, go with it. Stream, right? But yeah. <laughs> so what do you do? Um, I I do a little bit of everything. I predominantly focus in the liquor industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just why I brought some whiskey. Yeah. yeah. I was like you know what. Might as well bring some whiskey, something fun. Excited um, to hear about that. I'm sorry. I'm excited to hear about the whiskey. Oh yeah, the whiskey's <laughs> fun. Like I said, I wanted to bring the mezcal, but mm -hmm. it's just I didn't think it would it would be appropriate to be drinking warm mezcal that I left in my car. Yeah. yeah um, it just would. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't have tasted <laughs> good. But um, so I have a liquor store over in the southwest side of Chicago called Moreno's Liquors. Um, I have a speakeasy behind there called Ositos Tap. That's mm -hmm. um, focused on like craft cocktails, craft beers. And like artisanal Mexican food. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I have a brokerage firm, mm -hmm. so I bring liquor into the market. Like I said, a lot yeah. of liquor stuff. Um, yeah. And then uh, I also do some small uh, local. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say politics, but I, I I work with the city of Chicago pro bono work. Yeah. Okay. So I manage the finances for the little village neighborhood of Chicago okay. uh, with a board that I have. Yeah. So I'm a little bit all over the place. Wow. So is both brokerage like distribution or something different? Yeah, excellent question. A lot of people always ask that because yeah. they're like brokerage. You know, they they everyone always assumes real estate because You're right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. what yeah. most brokers do. Right. And I totally get that, but it's totally different from what we're doing. And there's various different kinds of brokers out there. Yeah. So I broker deals between suppliers and distributors or sometimes cool. between uh, let's say the actual distillery or brewery. Yeah or winery um, directly to suppliers and distributors as well. Right, okay. And I make sure that, basically I work on making sure that product gets from point A to point B. Right, right. And I get a percentage of, of sales right, from yeah. that. So yeah. Right. What's interesting between a supplier and a, uh, and a, like a producer? Is that the... Uh, distributor, producer, uh, yeah. Pr there's, um, well, in, in Illinois, there's the three-tier system. Yeah. It's all sorts of different things. So right. obviously producer... Or um, brewery or dis uh, distillery and all that. Yeah. Those are the ones that are fabricating, making right. the, the product. Uh, the supplier is the one that's taking it from them and getting it on the trucks and bringing it, let's say, from Mexico or from France or okay. wherever it might be coming to uh, a distributor. 
okay. And the distributor, yeah, is then the smaller guys that right. work, let's say, in a specific state or even a small region. Yeah. yeah. I, grandpa was a food distributor. Oh, cool. Okay. And, and my grand, and my uncle became the food distributor. Oh, nice. His way, uh, took it over. So what, what kind of, like, food, produce? Uh, or? Yeah, like, uh, uh, mostly... Prepared food, so like Oscar Mayer was one of their major oh, wow. brands. Oh wow! Okay, um, cool stuff. Stuff like that. Yeah, that's neat. So my my grandfather, uh, I, we learned everything in the grocery business. Yeah, obviously a little bit different, but yeah, but my grandfather had a couple grocery stores uh, back in late fifties, early sixties yeah. in Little Village, and at that time that whole neighborhood was all Ukrainian, Bohemian, mm-hmm. um, and he was one of the few Mexicans living in that community. Right, and opened up. Uh, some grocery stores. My father learned everything in it. I asked my dad, I said, you know, why didn't you stay in, uh, in the grocery business? He said, well, liquor doesn't spoil. Yeah. I said, Man, this guy's smart. Right. <laughs> so I was like, it's actually very smart. But now, you know, now we have all this craft beer and stuff. No, no, and we're no, gonna right. push I've it out. i spoiled by liquor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happens. You know, when you get more into the artisanal and craft stuff, it right. starts yeah. to become a little mm-hmm. bit more fragile right. yeah. than, uh, let's say... Oh, I just know. mean in life. Oh, in life. <laughs> that's, 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 oh, yeah. Place. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. But yeah, you know, so that's, uh, that's a bit of, of what I do. Yeah. yeah. Right. I and enjoy. Did you just meet this weekend? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was, I, I actually, my cousin was in town from LA. Yeah. And um, I told her before she left, because I, you know, I don't get to see her very often. And um, sadly, right before this time that she came, the last time she came was for my grandfather's funeral. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, obviously we're all busy and right. stressed and, you know, obviously not our, our best selves. Right. Um, during that time, you know, our grandfather was very important to our family. So I invited her out to go get, you know, just a, a quick drink or a small snack or something. And when she came out, she was like, oh, yeah, uh, I was just at a barbecue. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, like, you, you're welcome to stay. I don't want right, to yeah. impose. She's like, no, it's fine. Um, and then when we came back, uh, we had a mutual, well, not necessarily a mutual friend, but a friend of mine that I knew in the industry Yeah, um, was there. And they, she was like, you should come in and say hi. So Why was she at the barbecue? So she also has a mutual okay. friend um, <laughs> who owns a, a, a restaurant, I believe, right? I haven't yep, been there was yet. Ian. It was his birthday. Yeah. Uh, uh, his birthday party, I guess. Um, so I crashed on the birthday. Yeah, right. <laughs> that restaurant is really something. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, I'm thinking about going for my birthday. Really you know, good. since I, I didn't realize that I knew so many people there at that restaurant. Right, yeah. And they're like, you should stop by. I was like, sure. I said, my birthday's next week. I don't have any plans, so um, mm-hmm. go over there and grab some dinner. Why not? Yeah. And support a good local Galinas. small business. And, right. Yeah. I'm grand and it's just something. Yeah. I When uh, when my uh, cousin told me, I, I heard Alina, and then uh, when I was leave, leaving, I thought they said Alinea. And I was like, <laughs> wait, I, I messaged her. I was like, he didn't say Alinea, did he? I was like, I don't think that's the owner of Alinea. <laughs> and I was like, it's a very different place. Right, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah. It's something uh, that food's pretty good. Oh uh, yeah, and uh, my art is decorating the whole restaurant. So oh, lovely! So I we'll love be able that. To see some some big paintings there. Yeah, and you got some cool art. I'm looking around and just nice. like beautiful stuff. Um, so actually, artists uh, kind of run in my family. Yeah, my sister's an artist. Um, so my eldest sister. I have two older sisters. Mm-hmm. Uh, my uh, uncle is an artist as well. Does like real real cool kind of um, photogenic almost paintings where <laughs> it looks as if it's a photo. Yeah. yeah. Photo um, really? Yeah, there, yeah. Sorry, I couldn't think of the proper sure, terminology. Yeah. Um, it's also but, true, though. Yeah. They're also photogenic. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas my paintings are not so much. It's a better experience in person, I think. Yeah, I agree. You know, well, it, like I said, it just depends on, on what... what the uh, style is going to be different. 100%. And, right. and really mood, if you ask me, I think it depends on... You know what mood are you in? I feel like art um, will will not only affect that, but it also may help. Um, yeah. So mm-hmm. for me, that I think that's one of my biggest things. That's why I love art. But. Is your uncle in Chicago? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was a uh, uh, um, in the fire department for a long time. Yeah. Started oh, cool. painting um, and really got into it. And when he retired, now that's what he's doing full time. Wow. Um, he does very very well. Um, so so you know, uh, the fire department. I'm uh-huh. curious about the inner workings of that. Mm. Never really talked about it yeah. to anyone. 
Uh, I mean, I know you're you're holding the microphone quite a bit here. Yeah, right? but um, you'd have to ask him. Sense. Honestly, I don't know a lot. Um, I do know that they used to cook a ton. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, they were always cooking, and I was younger when you know when he was in the fire department. But I remember always going in, and um, he was the main guy that was cooking there. And I was like, "Oh, your, your uncle makes some really good food." And I was like, yeah. "You guys." actually worked or are you just cooking all day <laughs> and they're like well if there's no fires <laughs> yeah, right. I guess like, news, right? yeah. yeah so i was like that's kind of cool you know it seems like a good gig right yeah mm-hmm. and so not easy to become a um you know uh, um, a firefighter in chicago it's really yeah. hard to get in it's yeah. a high demand um or a lot of the, yeah requirements I mean, or a lot of requirements and at the same time um people don't quit people don't quit yeah so they do not have a lot of right. openings. Yeah. So, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I really didn't know that. Um, yeah. It's like going to Yale, I guess, for yeah. like fire fire departments. I, you know, I have other people that I know that are in the fire department um, in various other townships. And they're mm-hmm. always like, yeah, if I could get into Chicago, I'd love to work there. It's like the best place to work. There's a what? firehouse nearby uh, where I see guys beating tractor tires with hammers <laughs> outside. <laughs> I, I don't know what that's for. It's got to be some kind of practice, you know. Interesting. Yeah, it's pretty yeah for maybe for doors or something. Yeah, oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Something, exercise of some kind, I guess. It's pretty funny. Yeah. I wonder, too, uh, because we've got some of the strictest, um, like, fire codes mm-hmm. in the country, mm-hmm. if it True. helps, uh, you know, and I wonder if, if over time, if fires have gone up or down, like, per area. It's mm-hmm. a great question. I feel like there aren't... Like, when, when there's a fire in Chicago, it's, like, big news. Right, like yeah. People yeah. really talk about it because they don't, I feel like, considering how large this uh, right. city is, they don't really seem to happen very often. It's right. Like you hear about mm-hmm. it maybe once a month, about a fire, and uh, that's about it, which, I mean, is not a small amount, but considering sure. yeah. the, how many people live here, it's really not that frequent. I think most fire trucks you see are probably going to car crashes or something. Yeah, right, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I would. Or people that. dying. To so yeah. it's not always just hospital. Uh, like they'll send a fire truck to a, um, you know, if a person dies, they might send a fire truck mm-hmm. to, to help carry the body. Sure. Uh, or to like help, uh, not yeah, just carry it. But okay. uh, my uncle was an EMT with yeah. the fire department, so that's definitely what they do. Um, but yeah, you're talking about the strict, you know, strict uh, fire regulations and everything. Right. And uh, I guess it makes sense when yeah. you burn down most of your city. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they become real strict. Yeah. They're like, uh, let's not have this happen ever <laughs> again. It's like, well, you could start by not making everything out of wood. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we learned, we've got, we learned that lesson, I think, once already <laughs> in Chicago. Yeah. I know we have super strict uh, for electrical conduit. That kind of so like electrical wiring, it's very strict here. Yeah, uh, and I don't blame them to do. Yeah, I don't blame them because the, I mean electrical fires are the number one right. causes, yeah. if I remember correctly. Really? Who would have thought I'd be coming here to talk about uh, <laughs> electrical <laughs> fires? Right. I'll, uh, I'll make sure to uh, turn off my power strip after mm. <laughs> after these episodes from now on. I've got like yeah, you've got a lot of stuff going, going on. Going yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah, that's funny. Um, fun fact, actually. Mm. So I remember when I was living up north, you know, near Wrigley, I remember mm-hmm. going a little bit further, what is an Irving Park area, and I was walking down the street, came to a, a, an alley, mm-hmm. and I looked down because I was looking at it and I said, this alley looks weird. And I'm sure you've seen those alleys where it's like cobblestone, it's not like brick or, yeah. or concrete or anything yeah. else. But this one was, was different. I came closer, I was like, what the heck? And it was all wood. Oh, and I was like, wow. "Wow, this is one of the. Yeah. This has to be one of the oldest roads yeah. in the entire city of Chicago. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it had to have been a road that had been there since predating Chicago Fire. Yeah, because I remember specifically hearing and learning about the fact that they not only built the sidewalks and the houses out of wood, but they built the streets out of wood. Yeah, and I always pictured it as like the streets wood, you know, like just putting I don't know wood like you see in your house." Right. But no, they're like little squares that they cut huh. in and just pounded right into the ground. Right, sort of like cool. cobblestones, how they make those block, the, uh, what do you call it? Like granite ones. Uh-huh. So it would be like sto- uh, wood blocks. Yep. Kind of? Yeah. There was just a little bit more of a gap in between. Yeah. But it was wood. And I was like, huh. well, I've never seen that. Yeah. I didn't cool. know that existed. And now I understand 
what you know right why this whole city burnt down so yeah. quick like it was everywhere yeah imagine their streets on fire yes <laughs> i actually had no idea about that yeah it's really crazy was there mortar was there anything between them or they just, no it looked like dirt like just ah design. okay yeah, yeah. It just looked like, like dirt in between okay. it was like probably said, that state-of-the-art technology right yeah yeah, too. yeah. <laughs> well there was so much wood here like i'm a big history nerd oh man. yeah and like there just was so much wood here that they were like, what are we going to do? Well, let's build everything right. with it because there's too much. Like there was very dense forests and um, they're like, well, might as well. Right. I mean, the city was a swamp basically. Right. Yeah. Um, and actually a lot of what you see now where Lakeshore Drive is and all of that. Yeah. That was all what they did is after the Chicago fire, they just took all of the debris and just pushed it towards the lake mm-hmm. and built out Chicago. Right. Which is crazy. Plus, how they raised all the streets. Some, at some point, they like raised all the streets. Yep, because of the uh, flooding. That was because of flooding. Okay, yeah. It's so I like uh, seeing those old buildings right. that were that were uh, they were right on the water, weren't they? Or is it the opposite? Right on the water. Uh, There's they're, they're, the old buildings in Edgewater. They have these old right, yeah. photos of them where where they're. There's. I mean, there's. They're, they're, are they right on the water or are they offset? Since There's places in Edgewater that are that were like, like right up and on the rain, lake, but... um, and so they have to you know put in blocks and stuff to mm-hmm. protect it. So that's um, what you're talking about. They were handing okay. on tubs, but also like in lots of neighborhoods in the city, not just on the lake, right? They were they had to raise the uh, level of the street. Yeah, and so that's why you see these houses where there's two do- there's two doors. There'll be a door on with a bridge. Yeah, to the, to the door, especially in Pilsen. Yeah, we see it all the time. Area, yeah. And I, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't know why it was like that. My gro- my my father, um, when he immigrated here, lived in Pilsen for about seven years, mm-hmm. and he told me he said, "Yeah, he said it used to flood here all the time." Huh. He was like, "It was lower than the rest of the city." He said, "You remember there being you know roads that were a little bit like kind of ramped up yeah. a little bit as if there were hills," and I've never really pictured that in chicago before because you don't see hills yeah yeah and uh he was like places used to flood all the time and they put in big sewers and it stopped flooding after they oh okay they they improved the water like drain uh what do you call it storm Mm -hmm. storm system yeah yeah it's pretty cool so have you always been in chicago scott yeah um my i grew up in well chicago till fourth grade and then naperville after that Mm-hmm. And then my mom grew up in Chicago and then Oakland. And then my grandpa grew up in on the south side and my grandma grew up on the north side. Oh, wow. And that's the history. Very <laughs> eclectic. I love it. Oh, he's from here, though. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I guess uh, same. Well, not here, here. Uh, I'm pretty far out in the suburbs, I guess, where I'm from. Yeah. Uh, McHenry. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah so oh, that is pretty far. Yeah. It's like nine yeah. minute drive from yeah. here, I would say. Uh, on a good day. Not that far from uh, no. uh, Naperville, right? No. I don't think so. Not crazy far. He's like, no, it's still another hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certainly, not. certainly not Chicago. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I guess when I turned 21, I moved to the city, and I've lived in the city since then. So that's... Is your family from, from out there, too? Uh, yes. And I think I'm really the only one who's, who's very far away. Hmm. Um, no one moved out of state. Of kind of, well, my sister did originally. She moved to a farm uh, in Missouri. Okay. Uh, she had an organic farm that was pretty cool that time period. Nice. Um, it was fun to what, go out there and what time period? Different was she, world like that. Yeah. Yeah. Was that an early organic farming? Uh, not. Like what year? Ish. Maybe ten years ago, let's say. So, okay. um, something around there. Uh, first, she started farming here in DeKalb with you know with her family, and then she she wound up moving there. Yeah. For a number of reasons. Yeah, yeah. But uh, she's back here again. So that was kind of fun to get to get to see that rural side of Missouri that I just never would have yeah. been drawn to for any reason. So you didn't. You weren't in Missouri at that point. You were in Missouri. Right, yeah, right, right out yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Even when you go down there, they're like, well, where are you from, Missouri or Missouri? I mean, <laughs> that was like, you mean St. Louis? Like, no, no, right. no, that's Missouri. The rest yeah. is Missouri. That's fine. <laughs> right. uh, Macon is where they were. 
that's um hmm. doesn't mean anything I think to most people, hmm. including me. I don't, I'm not <laughs> sure what that means. My um, sister in law's family moved were my sister in law's from St. Louis and they hmm. her parents moved out into like the country. Oh wow when they retired. It sounds pretty cool. They have like sort of like their hippie uh like set up. Yeah. Uh, like I dig their it. little hobby farm kind of thing. Okay. Cool. Forest farm. Have you lived anywhere else or you've only no. lived in Chicago? Uh you know, oh. Naperville. Well, Naperville in Chicago. Yeah. Sorry. I was or in Lyle. Sure. I lived for Lyle in Lyle. Lyle? Three years. Okay. Yeah. Oh interesting. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I definitely um I mean I'm a I'm a Chicago guy and I love Chicago. Um but I lived in the suburbs for a little bit when I was younger. Um, I hated the suburbs. Well, I was a city boy. Right. <laughs> yeah, I just from here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was a city boy. Like I, I grew up here and uh, moved to the suburbs. And as soon as I was eighteen, I moved right back to Chicago. Um, and then when I graduated from college, I I needed to get away. I was just like, you know what? I need to experience something different. I've yeah. been here for a while and kind of really understand myself. Figure out what did I want to do and what did I want. Yeah. So what's the best way to do that? Well. Moved to Spain. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I literally, I, I'm not joking, I graduated and two and a half months later I moved to Spain. Where um, in Spain? Uh, I lived in Madrid. Awesome. Yeah. yeah How long Madrid. were you there? A little over a year. Okay. Um, it's a beautiful city. Yeah. I ran out of money and of course there was like a massive recession and yeah. Spain was like in the heat of it. I mean, it was crazy the stuff that was going on there. Massive protests. What years was this? This was uh, 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I mean, it was just nuts. Like, it was a great I, experience. I loved it. But I, I do remember one time where I called home and I was like, yeah, so I think there's a revolution starting. <laughs> I'm not sure. But there's people like destroying everything and like attacking the police and like God. they're like getting ready to, they're marching towards like all of like parliament and all yeah. this, or not um, parliament, parliament uh, in England. But, yeah. Nonetheless, it was it was really intense. Um, yeah, I'm sure. How did um, you interact with that in person? To be honest with you, I feel like when I was there, uh -huh. you just become numb to it after a while. Like yeah, I was sure. walking to the movie theater, and it became almost normal to see police in like riot gear, head right, to toe, yeah. and not like here where they just have a helmet and like a billy club. No, mm -hmm. those guys were like in full on like Jeez. bionic suits. Yeah, um, and there was. Uh, you know some police officers and i saw there was a bunch of stuff on fire and i was like what's going on they're like oh some protesters started you know burning the garbage cans and we're like oh okay and we just went <laughs> to the movie theater and like, it was nothing and that was like a block from the movie theater. right yeah um and that's just how it was yep and it was just an interesting experience and i loved it you know there was the cultural differences are are, are so unique but man it's just beautiful there the people are great um Really, honestly, my only main complaint was that they don't have any vegetables in like their oh, diet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there's so after a while, you're like, I need substance. Yes. <laughs> like, there's no vegetables. In right. This yeah. I often find that when I'm traveling, I want yeah. I'll just go to a grocery store, get some vegetables, keep that available, and then because restaurants too, even in like uh, New Orleans, yeah, it's like a little bit of effort to get uh, uh, vegetables. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, like I need nutrients. Right, yeah. You know? Like my body is not feeling well. Yeah. I've been eating meat I want and fiber. potatoes. <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. What's Madrid? Are they ham or or what are some of the main things? Yeah, uh, jamon. Yes, yeah. jamon ibérico um, is very, very big there. So you'll be walking the streets and there are places that just sell legs of like ham. Yeah. So you're just like legs hanging all over the yes, place yes. like holy cow what is going on here okay. um and it's amazing it's like butter you just right. they cut it right off and they yes. put it on top of some manchengo cheese yes a little bit of um like uh, you know tomato and, and olive oil uh mix on some bread and you eat that and you're like whoa this is fantastic yes and they're like this is our breakfast <laughs> <laughs> huh. yeah it's very nice yeah that sounds great that sounds so good yeah, uh, uh, I've I've made some snack uh, that we can have during the break. Oh, cool! 
So awesome. uh, about an hour in, we choose to take a break for a few minutes. Are you going to pull out a start. whole leg? Yeah, right. Yeah. No, no, I think quite so worthy. That beat crazy. I'd be like, whoa, how did you know? No, just like it's like, uh, like hanging in here. Yeah, that's the other room. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> Imagine if you go to a, to you know to someone's house in Chicago and you see a leg hanging. Yeah. There, you're going to be like, something is Something's wrong up. and I have to call the police. You might believe it here. Yeah. You know, looking around. I mean, I might, I might have it to paint. Yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, How many true. times have you seen a leg painted? That'd be you know? crazy, but I, so, I I could totally see that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> but open to it. In Spain, it's you like your hands on don't ha- Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, we could get some. It's just yeah, right. Crazy yeah. expensive. Right. Um, even over there, they're not cheap for a leg because, and that leg will last for a month or so. Yeah. Um, but I think they're like a couple hundred dollars to buy that. Yeah, and, I believe that. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, it's just crazy. What is there one uh, frontier? They sell the whole animals. Yeah. Like alligator. Frontier. Do they sell alligator? No, uh, I know they do goat. goat. Uh, some of my friends did a goat. Hey. No, that's, that's a great a topic. What What are some, what is the weirdest meat that you all have ever eaten? In Montreal, I had raw horse. Oh, raw Whoa. horse. Yes. Crazy. Raw? Tartar. I mean, they said it was tartar. Oh, it was tartar. Right. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I'm picturing them just like. <laughs> just, there, was, there was this horse in the street. It wasn't looking so good. Yeah. They didn't want it to go to waste. They yeah. didn't want it to go to waste. It was starting to fall. Yeah, right. right they had there, to get right. rid of the meat. <laughs> on the spot, yeah. Like nothing goes yes. to waste. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Raw. How horse. was that? Can you describe that? Ah, uh, it was like okay. compare it to anything. Uh, you know, like steak tartare, but uh, it wasn't very good. Sure. And it wasn't like a great. Uh, it was fine. Mm-hmm. It just was more novelty. Interesting, because the French eat horse. Yeah. And when I was in Madrid, I went to a place, and they served exotic meats, and I had zebra. Mm. I've never had horse. I had zebra, and I was like, this is delicious. I was like, no wonder why the French eat horse. Right, yeah. Now, again, I haven't had horse tartare. Right, yeah. But, I mean, I assumed. It I was seems, like, oh, it's yeah. got to be somewhat similar. Plus, if you, I think, you know, there's probably all, you know, there's many different kinds of beef, right? Oh, yeah. So, okay. there's probably True. lots of different ways to make a horse exactly. Exactly. Sure. Parts of the and a zebra thing. too I mean, there must too. be some specific way to prepare it so you know yeah. it's a zebra do they leave a little or raised or something yeah, yeah. <laughs> where, yeah where was the zebra from is this like yeah. a South African zebra right. <laughs> or was it in like a is cage wild uh, <laughs> you know uh, yeah crazy yeah, yeah, yeah I had that yeah, or it's like, no, no, this amazing. zebra passed away of natural causes at the Madrid Zoo or some yes, shit yes, right <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> that'd be hilarious but yeah, I think uh, that's not even the craziest thing. I think the craziest thing I've ever eaten, um, and I'll, I'll never do it again, mm-hmm. is uh, I had tarantula. Oh. And that was oh, man. really disgusting. <laughs> How was that prepared? Uh, great question. So <laughs> I, I might as well just tell you the story because yeah, yeah. it's just such a ridiculous story and somewhat comical. Mm-hmm. So I was I was over in, uh, in Thailand. Um, mm. I was in Bangkok. And um, I had like an internship that I was doing in Hong Kong and Bangkok. And I'm there and there was, you know, I was with this Russian guy and a couple other people. And um, we saw these these French girls and um, we walked over, started talking to them and, you know, obviously flirting with them and stuff, trying to communicate as best we can. They spoke pretty good English mm-hmm. and they were like, oh, we're going to go get, or they all got up for a second and they got a drink. And then it looked like they were getting ready to leave. I said, where are you all going to go? And they're like, well, we're going to go get some tarantula. <laughs> and I said, of <laughs> course, like leave it to the French. Yeah, leave right. Horse, yes. tar- the French are so <laughs> out, like, they're out there. Like, yeah. They will, they, they do not shy away from <laughs> exotic stuff. And I started laughing, and I said, if you go eat a tarantula, I will go eat a tarantula. Wait, you said horse, right? No. Yeah. Well, no, I, for, well you say horse? <laughs> horse, <laughs> maybe horse too. I don't know. I, just want to clarify. I wasn't sure. I was horse. Not following the story, you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. But um, so they all got up as right when I said that. Yeah. And I was mm-hmm. like, "Where are you all going?" And they're like, "We're gonna go get a tarantula. Are you coming?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, what did I get?" When did you get? Yeah, right. I'm like, of course. Didn't think they would call your bluff. Yeah, I was like, of course the French would say that. Mm-hmm. And we went out, Pretty and funny. to put the cherry on the top, they not only got themselves a tarantula because there's carts like in Thailand, ah. there's little carts full of bugs on sticks <laughs> okay. that they like. They cook them, they put them on a stick, mm-hmm. and then if you want, you could put like tahini or something on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and 
they bought me my tarantula because I was like, oh, they definitely are like, this American's not going to eat this. Sure. And the Russian guy, he's like, look, if you eat half, I'll eat half. I was like, okay. <laughs> so we're, I, you know, we're taking bites out of this thing. It's crunchy. It's like chewy. It's not going down. Yes. You, keep, you just keep chewing and chewing. You can feel the legs like moving. Oh, God. Moving. Yeah. yeah. Well, not necessarily moving, but. Oh, like, moving in your mouth. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Because it just, you can't, it's like beef jerky, but you know, or oh, just yeah. like, it doesn't, you can't do anything with it. And these French girls are there going, mm, mm, just picking it apart. Like, <laughs> like, like it's some sort of high end delicacy. I was like, this is not caviar. This is a tarantula on the yeah. street. At 3 right. Yeah. In yes. Bangkok. Yes. They're messing with you, obviously. You I don't think they it, were. But... I think they were literally enjoying it because right. they were not looking at me. They were just like, like, were they just swallowing it, or how were they eating right. it so fast? I, I have how are no they... idea. Nah, I just saw them picking pieces off and just like literally just putting <laughs> it down, and eating it. I said, "This is gross." <laughs> and then they got in their tuk tuk and they left. And I was like, "Yeah, I blew that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I almost threw up. Like, what did you want? Like, you know, there's <laughs> no the way I could recover from yes. that." What's the best case scenario there? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I didn't. Some but parental it was close. legs in your teeth. <laughs> it was. It was gross. It was really bad. Okay. Yeah, that was. Uh, so yeah, that's that's definitely the grossest yeah. thing I've ever eaten. And uh, so you two seem like travelers. You travel a lot. I'm not a big traveler. No, I've traveled some, okay, but not so a lot. I was assuming. I guess, no, no. <laughs> from that last story. Yeah, I've gone to, yeah, Montreal and mm -hmm. uh, Taiwan once and oh, Germany nice. a few times, but. Uh, what's what Germany like? Place. I haven't been there. Oh, it was uh, so I've gone there uh, like three times, I think. Mm -hmm. One time was for a vacation where we went with a friend of mine to Amsterdam and Dusseldorf, mm -hmm. uh, Nick, you know, to both countries, and it was super good. Um, there, the beer in uh, Dusseldorf is alt beer, which I like a lot. It's a little bit it's darker. Really good. Okay. It's really good. Um, and they serve them in little. Could you, well, I don't understand what it is. Ah, it's, it's, what's it similar to? Uh, it's kind of it's a lager, and it's okay. a just a little bit darker than a, than like a light lager. So next door is Kolsch, so is Cologne, mm -hmm. and their beer is Kolsch, which is a very popular brand or type of beer. Uh -huh. And so it's a darker version than that, and they're like competitors. Düsseldorf and Cologne are like. Uh, Competitors. This right. man knows his beers. Yes. <laughs> I respect that. <laughs> I considered getting some beer for you too, but with the wine. No, the wine is great. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. And you can't go wrong with Argentinian, Ar Argentinian wine. As long as you don't tell my friends in Chile that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, the wine in Chile. Which, I mean, they both make fantastic wines. Yeah. Really good stuff over there. Where are you sourcing your alcohol from? Uh, so most of the stuff that I source mm -hmm. at, for my brokerage firm, at least, yeah. are uh, coming from Mexico. Cool. Um, I have a lot of connections in Mexico. Mm -hmm. You know, my my liquor store is the largest tequila and mezcal retailer in the country. Mm. So I've got like over a thousand. I can't even count anymore. Dude. Like awesome. thousand uh, over. I think it's like a thousand five hundred at this point. Mm -hmm. Varieties of just agave spirits. Um, we've been in the industry for 45 years, so we have a lot of connections. Um, and so, yeah, so a lot of them. Can't wait to try. Yeah. That's why I wanted to bring the mezcal, but well, I'll, I'll come down there. Whiskey's always good. good time. Yeah. Yeah. I live right by Estereo. Oh yeah. So they've nice. got a wide variety of yep. uh, mezcal to try. Next time you're there, tell Memo I said hi. So, so who? Memo. Memo. Okay. He's yeah. a Mexican. Um, uh, I think he actually just became a manager, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yep. Yeah. Cool. I think I know him. Yeah, Memo was a good guy. He could tell you a lot about Mescal. Yeah. Really, really good good guy. A lot of respect for them. How how close is Little Village to uh, Bridgeport? Uh, very close. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Uh, you I've, could drive... I've got a painting up at a show at the Zobi Art Center. Okay. Oh, cool. It's a good, it's a good show. It should be up for another month. Okay. That's right down the street from Phil's, no? Uh, I've never been to Phil's. No? Oh, you guys have to go there. What's Chicago that? staple for pizza. Yeah? Ah. Oh, some of the best. Yeah. I'm a big, big foodie, and yeah. Phil's mm. makes killer pizza. What Jardinier. sets them apart? Oh, okay. Oh, the yeah, best sorry. Part. I was just going to say how I make it. But yeah. Yeah, I, I, think this, I think this is the best way to have it, really, is mm -hmm. um, they, you know, if you get, first of all, their sausage. Yep. They make in-house. Okay. 
they get that traditional Chicago kind of sweet sauce. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just order the pizza. I do sausage, jardinera, and uh, onion. And okay. That's it. It's perfect. Right. Yes, I agree with those toppings. Right? They're so <laughs> good. Uh, jardinera, like, yeah. I don't know what the rest of the world is missing out on. I love it on a pizza. Yeah. 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 So and Chicago good. style for, for pizza, especially. Yeah. With the uh, oil. It's good. It's perfect. Yeah, I love it. What kind of crust are you doing? For me, I would say thin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like for that kind tavern. of pizza. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, tavern. yeah. tavern styles. Of, yeah. I don't think you could put, I mean, you could put jardinera on a deep dish, but I just don't think it would get lost. I think in I've done sauce. that. Um, Is it good? Just as a spice. It's nice. Okay. Like yeah. uh, for deep dish, yeah, I like tavern a lot. Uh, but Pacino's has a good is the deep dish that I like. Okay, Pacino's. Uh, yeah, where's that? Uh, it's well, it used to be many places. Okay, it grew and then shrunk. Gotcha. And so now it's just in I think Lincoln. Uh, it's got Lincoln Park is their main location. Okay. And then they've got in Lakeview mm. a, a like a park district uh, rented location. So that's mm. just uh, it's very limited uh, kitchen. In that location. Pacino's. Okay, Pacino's. I gotta check that out. It's a good obviously deep dish. I, you know I like Stuffed. Pequods a lot. Yeah. Yeah, um, but I haven't I haven't had Pacinos for me Pequod's is debatable if it would be considered I want to hear Chicago it I'm style. interesting <laughs> well yeah to me it feels not... more like Detroit oh really right I mean Where it's pan it's pan it's a thick bottom crust yeah it's a wonderful outer crust which is what uh, Detroit's good at yeah um, it's round so that's not Detroit <laughs> but other than that if it's like a round Detroit yeah but it still has the sauce on the top where Detroit yeah, is still true. like you know, cheese, but I I don't one hundred percent disagree. Yeah. You're right because Detroit does pan, and of right. course what they're known for is the cheese on around the right. crust, which is amazing. I'm gonna it's... go with uh, Douay and Uno uh, for for my favorite. Yeah, pizza. Oh, I don't like Uno. Yeah, Sorry. I'm sure a lot of people don't. <laughs> yeah, I think there's nostalgia attached to it. For yeah, me. and I think that's true for a lot of people. Probably okay. that's who, true. Who, who feel that way? Yeah, you know? I've had a lot of Nancys think... growing up. Yeah, and yeah. so. I can enjoy Nancy's uh, aspects of Nancy's. Yeah. What about um, Giordano's? Mm-hmm. I don't like Giordano's. It's like saying it. <laughs> yeah. I like how, it's, how it sounds. Giordano. But I always thought Giordano. <laughs> hey, I'm going to Giordano's. <laughs> like some New York accent right. or out of nowhere. Like, mm. They do the solid <laughs> sheet of sausage, right? Uh, yes, they I think do. so. So yeah. that was... That's kind of nice. Yeah, that's Other than that, it's I don't like, like anything else about it. Yeah, it's, it's too good. cheesy. It's like yeah. a down comfort. And none of, yeah, the sauce is kind of bland. Because yeah. it's a top cheese, I think. No, the cheese it, is inside. It is? Okay. But it's super cheesy. Yeah. And I, I agree that it's, in my opinion, the sauce is somewhat lackluster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I want more flavor. And it just, like, I have it. And I'm like, I feel like I'm just becoming i don't know a blob right. yes. as i eat this <laughs> for the longest time uh eduardo's was my favorite sauce okay but i've had them recently and i don't like them anymore no <laughs> they're off they've they're changed gone. they're gone they changed <laughs> you took them off yes, the list they're off the list mm. you go way way south um not Vito and nick's Vito and nick's yeah. great though but palermo's on 95th okay okay is fantastic i have i have had that yeah i like Palermo's good. a lot we order yeah. it at the uh movie studios okay this is thin crust. I don't know if they do. They do deep dish. I'm not sure. We only get the thin. Yeah, I think that's what they do. That, yeah, I think yeah. deep dish is almost totally a north side thing. Almost, yeah. They're really there's they exist right. side, but it was a north side thing that yeah happened. I think I I agree because I didn't ever have it until I moved to the suburbs. Okay, all growing up, it was only thin crust. We'd get um, Aurelio's yeah. and uh, other places, but mostly Aurelio's. I, I think you're. I think that's the same thing for me because I grew up in Archer Heights. And I moved to the suburbs when I was about eight, and um, I think maybe I had deep dish maybe once right. before I moved to the suburbs. And other than that, yeah, the suburbs when I would have deep dish, yeah. you know, because all the suburb people love deep dish. Right, it blew up in the suburbs during yeah like the nineties. Yeah, yeah my something like that. Loved it. Yeah, everybody was eating deep dish yeah. back then. What a novelty! But now, was. yeah, now we're getting back. And we're like, you know what? Now we got to get to the true Chicago, which yes. is tavern style, yes. and that's so much better. Definitely. And I hate when I see I those agree. like reviews and stuff, and they're like, "Oh, New York is better than Chicago." I'm like, yeah. "But how are you having comparing it?" Yeah, because <laughs> you're comparing it to deep dish, right? And deep yeah. dish is what we give to tourists or like yes. a special occasion, right? Yeah. I mean, how often are you guys eating deep dish? Uh, almost never. once or a few course. years yeah. yeah for me it's probably once a year yeah. that's usually how often I have it two times if 
if for whatever reason someone comes into town. As a kid, right? every time we came back to Chicago from any kind of family you know trip, uh, deep dish was the first yeah. meal every time. <laughs> That was that yeah. comfort food, it was like comfort. Chicago. Oh, yeah. Yes, I had to come back to it. Back then, yeah. deep dish was had become our thing in the suburbs. Do you know, I know my mom never grew up. We went to uh, S and T Pizza. Do you know S and T or no, S and T Provisions okay. is a shop, uh, <clears throat> like in the Oakland area, okay, somewhere. I can't. I don't know exactly. And you go there and you can buy semi-made pizzas. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, a crust. And then you buy sauce, and then you buy sausage, and you buy cheese. What's okay. the name of it again? Uh, S and S and T okay. provisions. S and T. They just opened their first second location. Uh, they, I think, they just opened two locations. One in like Bolingbrook. Okay. And this is the like, plugging episode yes, for sure. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Chicago. Oh, I'm not to me, it away <laughs> all the secrets. My great, my grandma, <laughs> my mom grew up on it. My my grandma used to get it. Um, yeah, it's a. That's that was the most common pizza, more even than Aurelio's was mm -hmm. S and T, and we'd make it. I gotta check it our own style. Interesting. Right? Awesome. See, for me, it's funny that you mentioned that because um, it's fun to do. Yeah. yeah, Chicago. There's a lot of great places, mm -hmm. um, and I I definitely will tell people like, oh, you should check this place out or this. Yeah. There's always a few that I keep just myself, just so. <laughs> where I'm like, I don't want it to blow up. <laughs> yeah, right. I just want it to stay low key. And I want them just to get enough customers that they're doing well, right, but yeah. they don't need a thousand more customers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because it happens all the time in Chicago where you go to a restaurant and the next day you're there, you're like, oh my God, it blew up. There's a line. Right. And then you don't want to go back anymore. Yes. Because yeah. you don't want to wait in that. Right. You're like, no, I, I want the service that I had before. Yes. I've got a hard time imagining myself waiting in a line to have brunch. I think well, um, yeah. Yeah. I could do 20 minutes max. Uh, anything other than that is a crazy person. Yeah, I mean, I've done it before. There's a place that's just but... down the street. Um, it's on Augusta. Um, I see a line out there every weekend. Some days, I guess it's during the it's week, wild. maybe. I don't know the name of the place. Uh, it's maybe, maybe uh, Augusta and... He's California. changing the name so that yeah, right. nobody can find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, wait, it wasn't a guy. Was already found. <laughs> no, it's not wood. It's it's one of those W streets. Uh, gotcha. But yeah, I see that place packed. On the, the sidewalk is just packed every time. Whenever I drive past there, I just feel like everyone looks yeah, so it's sad. Yeah, it's that good. Such yeah. magic in the line. Right. It's the strangest view, thing to see. Well, there's so many good restaurants. Right. Not even good. Let me rephrase. So many great restaurants yeah. in Chicago. I think so. And I think that's why so many people end up coming back a lot of a lot of people are always saying oh i'm gonna leave chicago and some of them do but we almost always come back yeah and yeah. whenever anyone comes back what do you ask them that, that they miss they say the food yeah. and it's because you could find so many things here in chicago that are right. fantastic yes and you just can't find this quality of food like hot dogs for example yeah mm -hmm. where else are you gonna get good hot dogs there's very few places no. outside of chicago that in la can... i had a lot of good street dogs really yeah bacon dogs and all sorts of things Oh, that's Mexican that's, hot dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's good stuff. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I feel like in general, though, but yeah, it's mm -hmm. just hard to find um, a lot of good stuff out, outside. Like, this city is just so no well known for food. It's like right. a culinary mecca. Plus, even now, when you take into the, the suburbs, too, there's certain types of food that is even better in the suburbs. Yeah. Uh, that where it may be was big here and now there's like a new community that's developed in yeah. the suburbs for certain foods 100 percent um what would you say as an example like i guess we were talking about the deep dish huh i well i think that's all contracted back so i think that's all okay. yeah uh, there's not as many deep dishes, ended, but like um there's very good indian food in in chicago but there's also really great uh from for smaller communities like um mm -hmm. what is it um, hyper, there's this hyper Badian right. restaurant in Naperville that I used to go to. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is it called? Uh, hyper called, What is yeah, that? Hyper Bad. I might be saying the name. It's a city. Okay. Um, oh, and, oh, I thought it was like a style yeah. of food. I and it's, like, and so it's a style of food <laughs> yeah. from that city. Oh, cool. Um, okay. And Interesting. I forget it's like, 
Mm-hmm. How is it different? I think it's Southern. Uh, it's I'm awful. just talking about it. I, don't know. <laughs> it's I can't remember. <laughs> no, like right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's basically just like goulash. Yeah. <laughs> now it's yeah. it's like a a tali is was what I would get when I was there, and so mm-hmm. it's um, a plate with some rice in the middle, and then uh, ten different little cups of different okay. things, mm-hmm. and so then you would so you get a big menagerie of stuff. Right. Oh, that sounds good. good. Yeah, there's a place, uh, Skokie, there's a place in Skokie, Skokie. Now we're getting Pita, Skokie. Right. Pita Inn, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's a good one. <laughs> Pretty trashy in terms of yeah. you know, fine dining experiences, I guess. I think but there's one in Lakeview, that's, that's too, or there used to be, at least, I yeah. think. Sometimes I've heard some of the that. best, like, yeah. I feel like some of the best food is a food that are just, like, hole in the walls. Right, yeah, mm-hmm. for like, sure. If I walk in, it looks a little dingy, I'm like, okay, I think I'm in the right place. Yeah. And then usually the food is great. Right. Not always, yeah. obviously. I'm not saying, hey, find whatever shitty place you yes. see in the corner, that's going to be good. Yeah. But there's some really good places that are just, like, right in there. Uh, up on Devon, I used to get uh, guacamole at this place. That mm-hmm. was, for me, the, my favorite guacamole when I was at this one bar up in the area. Mm-hmm. But then it got shut down by the health department. And in the health report, it said it was a uh, three-ring circus of pestilence. Oh, my God. <laughs> and so that, because uh, I, yeah, I knew hilarious. a guy who worked, uh, lived up there, and uh, so yeah, he, he saved that. He's like, this is pretty good. That's really <laughs> Sounds like a place to go. Yeah. Really cool place that uh, I've been to over way south, also, uh, closer, to the, closer to the lake. I can't remember ex- the exact neighborhood. Where is Alderman Burke, the, the now... Yeah, yeah. He's still. The he, right he's now. still all okay. Well, um, and I won't say anything bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's. No, he's going to last. The, what is it? The elections in two years or so. He won. So. He won again. As crazy yeah. as it sounds, but basically, I, I don't think it's that far from his house. But Taurus flavor uh-huh. um, is stellar. And I definitely recommend it. It's one of those places where it's like it's like a greasy spoon kind of thing. You know, it's not healthy in any in any yeah. sense, but the food is spectacular. And what they do is they do uh, hoagies. Okay. But just like stuffed with this amazing beef that they make. Ah. And, you know, there's... Like a roast beef? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, well, yeah, kind of like that. You'd have to have it. Like, I don't know how... It's not necessarily a roast beef, um, but you got to try it. And it just has like this very melty American cheese in there. Mm -hmm. And it is spectacular. It's Hmm. so good. Uh, I remember when I went, there was this little old lady that was there, and she's like, I've been coming here since I was a kid. Yes. She's like, the sandwiches are just as good as they were when I was a kid. <laughs> and she's like, the only thing I don't like anymore is she said that they changed the malt. She ah. said, I used to make chocolate malt yes. from scratch. And ah, she said, so now, good. yeah. A big, she, fan, a big fan of a malt. Right. Yeah. And, um, and there's not a lot of places that do them. Right. And she was Super like, Dogs she does. It. Super Dogs does, yeah. But yeah, so she was like, I come here every week. It's like, Jesus, like, how are you still alive? <laughs> she was like 80. Yeah. It's crazy. She, her body has adapted. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. She is now right. the, like, she's the, the hoagie. Right. It's <laughs> hilarious. Um, we're coming up on... Coming up on an hour soon. Okay. If we want to take a break at the hour point. Sure. Sure. Um, or we take a break right now. It's up to you guys. Sure. That's, That's probably since yeah. we said it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it's going to be antsy. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, are we done yet? All right. Yes, we... Uh, let's see. Uh, hmm? We want, we don't have to go right into it yet. I'm no sorry. worries. I'm just going to get... What do you think, by the way? Oh, I liked it a lot. Yeah. Um, cool. Especially the first, you know, I'm getting a different taste, you know, over time, right? That's a lovely little still life on that table right there. I've got to say. It's very good. From where I'm standing now, it's pretty, <laughs> it it's pretty good. cool. <laughs> we got the... Uh, the grapes, the cat, the, the flowers, some <laughs> yeah. some fake, some real, oh. all dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't the, know why the pineapple, it, the, it has this kind of like... Roman kind yeah, of yeah, like, yeah. I feel like I should be With lying the grape down. Lying, grapes lying, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, tumbling over. Or... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's nice. I think that's nice. Uh, I, but before I paint that, 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. You need some more? You're good. No, I'm good. Yeah, I'm I'm to stop. <laughs> yeah, I'm just pouring myself a little yes. bit because I know myself too. Yeah. Sorry. You good? Yeah, you good. Cool. Suggesting. <laughs> Get in the face. Smoke wagon. Oh, Smoke yeah. wagon. Where is it from? Nevada? Nevada? Yeah, it's Nevada. This is a fun bottle. Yeah. And, oh. I like the stamp. Right? right? So, like, you now have the close up. Oh. We tried to have that okay. in the show. Nice. Cool. It's, it, you know, that's what we got. Three cameras. Cool. That's how we would do this. Um, why don't you tell us about this whiskey right here? Yeah. Um, you can show the bottle in your camera. Of course, yeah. So, um,. Yeah, what we're drinking right now is some smoke wagon that, uh, but not just any smoke wagon. Mm -hmm. This, so this is a single barrel. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with what single barrel whiskeys are or bourbons, but uh, this is something that's super fun. Uh -huh. So, this so, should we start over? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. No, it's just a background. You know? No, I have a noise canceler. Oh, oh yeah, cool. Okay. But yeah, so yeah, this, you know, Smoke Wagon is from Nevada, but they source their whiskey from mm -hmm. a distillery over in Indiana called MGP. Yeah. MGP is known, like, internationally for making some of the best bourbons, uh, predominantly high rye bourbons. Mm -hmm. And so they finish, or they allow it to age a little bit longer over in their distillery while they're waiting for their juice to get to age. Okay. Um, and first of all, I love the packaging. On yeah. It. I think right. it's badass. Yeah, it's like, a pretty bottle. Yeah, right? Like, this is a beautiful That's eight, bottle. Eight years? This is an eight-year-old. Okay. So eight-year-old barrel strength, sixty-one point eight percent of alcohol. Um, sixty-one point eight. Uh, the eight. Oh, the eight-year. Uh, for the single barrels, they've done between, if I think, if I recall correctly, between eight to ten-year-olds. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them have been eight. Okay. But they haven't done any single barrels in a couple of years. Uh, this guy sold out at my store in like an hour, and um, it's tasty. It's smoky. Yeah. And I like to put little cartoons on the back. So this is from... You uh, add that? Uh-huh. So I put little stickers on there. Uh, so this was the one... This whole series that I did last year. Let me close up on the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a cool sticker on there. So, I mean, it's done by a local artist in, in Chicago. Okay. Um, and it's called Barky Blinders. Oh, that's cool. Obviously, yeah, yeah, Barky Blinders. It looks like a uh, chihuahua and that was, a bulldog. Yep. Yeah. So that was my, my pup right there. Um... Unfortunately, passed away, but that's what Osito is. My bar is named after was Osito, uh -huh. uh, which is right there, Manchuela. Mm -hmm. And um, sure. yeah, I used to, you know, there that whole year, I did the dog series. So mm. every single release that I did had a sticker on it with a different kind of dog artwork. Uh -huh. So I, I, you know, um, I had kind of a Sopranos looking one, um, like. I had a whole bunch of different versions yeah. that I was doing. Now I'm doing like a elk version. <laughs> okay. Very different, drastically yeah. different. But what's, like, what is uh, in, what's cueing those sorts of decisions? Um, How are you deciding what to do when? I think it differentiates. And, those, and that looks like like a, it looks kind of like a historical sort of style of uh, yeah. illustration. Like it looks like a very old style of illustration. Straight up, so and this from somewhere specific that you so. It was supposed to showcase kind of my bar, because my bar is a speakeasy, mm -hmm. so hidden away, you know, that classic Chicago vibe, I wanted to kind of portray that, yeah. and so they're sitting there, you know, with their old-timey suits, drinking a bottle of Smoke Wagon, yeah. mm -hmm. um, which, by the way, is not smoky, I'm, you know, yeah, as, no. as we tried it, it's nice, it's clean, mm -hmm. but, um, but customers, a lot of times, are looking for a way to differentiate what bottles they have. Mm. And the stickers help a lot, right? Yeah. And they like stickers. Like people collect yeah, bottles right. sometimes, yeah, just for stickers. It's actually mostly college guys. Yeah, like have you ever heard? Of, <laughs> have you heard of like Tulip Mania? Uh, yeah, yeah. So with the Dutch, mm -hmm. you know, they went crazy and they all were collecting all these tulips. Yeah. Well, it's kind of the same thing really? almost with this. Is there a market for it too? There's a huge market. Oh my gosh! Where <laughs> and it's and it's sale of these unique bottles. <laughs> For lack of better words, it's insane. Yeah. You know, I understand, like, I, I put tact, you know, like, tactful kind of uh, right. cartoons. There's, 
value in it. Yeah. But and maybe I think not that, what the market is saying. Exactly. <laughs> but sometimes people take it to an extreme, and these bottles will go for thousands of dollars on the secondary market mm. simply because of something stupid on them. I swear to God, so I'm on I'm on this group. Um, I probably shouldn't say the name just in case. <laughs> Fair enough. But I'm on this group where they share ridiculous uh, oh. um, like things that people have done with their bottles. Uh-huh. And we've seen ones where they wax it head to toe, put like a little... Uh, you know, a little Simpsons character on the top, and they're like, uh, the new collector's edition Simpsons Old Forester. And they're like, <laughs> what? Like, <laughs> why? Like, why are you doing this? And, the, yes. you know, they put so much effort into making these body, these bottles look mm-hmm. kind of tacky. Right. Oh. And you're like, oh, I wouldn't want to drink that. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, the consumers... Are they like, drinking it? I don't even know. I don't think they are. Are they just collecting? I think they're collecting. And it's, it's, like I said, it's like insanity. Right. Literally, like, people people are losing their minds. People collect a lot of stuff. I mean, they collect uh, sneakers. They collect anything that seems sort of one of a kind. Yeah. um, Limited. Things that are limited. I was was having a conversation recently about uh, old band t-shirts, tour shirts. Oh, yeah. How unbelievably expensive those can get. Uh, You'll you'll find, uh, I don't even know, a band... uh, for the sake of humor, let's say Quiet Riot, yeah. and <laughs> you'll see a tour shirt of theirs um, from 94. Okay. Right. Are they touring still? Sure. But uh, you'll find that for $700. Um, there's, there's a store, actually, that I was in Nashville uh, last year, uh, close to this time of year, and I found a store that sold used uh, vin- used vintage band T-shirts for the most part, and music memorabilia for that, way that more. Right? Basically, most mostly T-shirts, sure, uh, jackets, things like that. But yeah, the main showroom was mostly T-shirts, just totally stacked. So many. You go you go through that and you say. I used to have this shirt uh, <laughs> in high school, yeah. and you see it listed there for three, four hundred dollars. Yeah, like, really. this is insane. But also, uh, I, I, I had, I would have had no idea that these could possibly be collector's items. Right. Yeah, and then I think we do that all the time. Of course, Pokemon cards and everything yeah. else. Right. Yeah. But you know, also what I think that I, you know, to an extent, yeah, you could make those shirts if you wanted to. They wouldn't be exactly the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But. When it comes to like a bottle, you don't even know if the juice is good, which is the most important part. Yeah, is what what is inside. Yeah, and people are buying it with stuff that they could do at home. Like you could buy wax, you could wax a bottle, you could yeah probably Google that specific toy, put that toy on top, and you have the same thing. Yeah, and it's like you know you're you're, right. you're creating a That's false right. sense yes. of demand for something. It could be really bad whiskey. Maybe you just right. created a new income stream for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's no true utility, right? Except that you got... you can. The utility for them is that I have this. Yeah. That little, few people have. Sure. They can feel good about that. That's where they're getting utility, right? It's a... There's probably better... There's much more... There's much better ways mm-hmm. to feel sure. good than doing that. Well, shortages. I mean, people want things more when there's shortages like toilet yeah. paper when there's, there was less yeah. toilet paper everyone was like I want fucking but toilet that, paper but toilet paper was good yeah it does things that you, yeah. Decide, that you need yeah exactly <laughs> but, but reasonable so, yes 100% agree but with that but now having a room full of toilet paper that's, that's what some people yes, were doing right, they were right. like they were like we need as much toilet paper right. as we can I'm gonna take 50 shits in yes. a day there and they a, were buying yeah. truckloads of toilet right. paper what a cultural oh. phenomenon yeah, um, wasn't that crazy? But it's like so the funny. depression. People had cans and cans of stuff. True, you know. But I could see food, canned food, more than toilet paper, because you never like if food yeah. goes no, away. No, that's true. It's true. I, you could There's use, ways around. Yeah, yeah, you could use a leaf yes. if you need to. Yeah. But when food goes, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. is that really, really um, an, yeah. an alternative? All we have is each other, I guess. Yeah, to true. Eat, to eat. That's so. <laughs> <laughs> you have a leg hanging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> painted. You're learning how to do ham. You make wonderful hams. 
but um but yeah it's just so crazy you know this false sense that that happens constantly and it, it just it's literally just supply and demand and it, and it just goes to show like psychology yeah. how strong that stuff really right, is yeah. like it, we're so easily manipulated as a uh as a people yeah it happens it take much. Con- no not a lot at all like it's it's so easy for us to get it's caught like up just in someone things. who's dressed well yeah. <laughs> that does it for me. Yep. That's all it takes. It pushes me over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, I wonder where that comes from. Is it like, uh, you know, if there's something limited that is that you need, like food, mm-hmm. and you see that it's limited, you, mm-hmm. you start becoming like, oh, I need to do that. Did that get, uh, is that mentality not helpful because when it's something that you don't actually need, but you do notice that it's limited, and so that mindset kicks in. I need this gold. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, right. The gold rush, <laughs> right? Yeah, and the fact, like, think about Christopher Columbus, who was a sick person. I mean, that yeah, guy was right. yeah, yeah, disgusting. But if I read, yeah, yeah, sure. And if you read his diary, one of the first things he says, and not exact quotes, but almost spot on to yeah. what, he, what he said you know his diary was very well written like really told you it was like reading Mein Kampf basically yeah. like exactly what he was thinking just written up and when he got to the islands um, he stopped at one of the islands and these people came out and greeted him right and they were like oh here's you know they, they came out with, with baskets of food and gold and they were welcoming them Mm-hmm. And the only assumption is obviously that Lee Ferrickson and the Chinese and other people that had already had gone through there had come and wanted to trade. Mm-hmm. So I thought, oh, he's coming to trade. And at the same time, we haven't seen them in a while. So they came to greet them because they didn't come out kind of scared or confused, at least based off of what he wrote. They came out greeting him, like yeah. welcoming him. Mm-hmm. And if you like imagine if you're dark skinned and you see a white person for the first time on a big ship, I doubt that's the first thing you're going to do. <laughs> but um he said, oh, what great people they are. What great slaves they will make. Right, yeah. And it was right. because he wanted all the gold. And yeah. I was like, it literally corrupted Boy, times him. have changed. Right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, so it's just so uh, crazy yeah. when I when I think about it. I don't know where I was going with that topic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go with it. I like where I was going. I like, I, I like being able to make inappropriate jokes. <laughs> but no, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got out of the Christopher Columbus via. Um, he got what he deserved. Lots of statues, right? That's yeah, well, he got his statues, but what? Which is crazy because he never came anywhere to North America. Right. Like, I mean, I guess the islands, but he never stepped foot in like Florida or anywhere else. Sure. So I don't know why we're praising him here, other than the fact that there's a lot of Italians. We like so our backyards a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I, guess, I guess that's probably the end of that. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's, that's much it's a lot of lack of information. People yeah. saying that you know, Christopher Columbus founded the new world. Like I'm like, well, yeah. first of all, he didn't find anything. Mm-hmm. He was like the third, you know, explorer. Secondly, we've been here this whole time. <laughs> like we were here. Right, there are people here. And uh, thirdly, he died at the bottom of a, a Spanish castle. Got exactly what he deserved, not because of what he did there, but because he tried to uh, split away from the Spanish, which was stupid. Okay, can you explain that? I, I don't know this bit of history. Yeah, so um, Columbus basically, when he was there, he decided to say, "Hey, these islands are not mine," uh-huh. and okay. split from the Spanish yeah. crown. And the Spanish crown was like, "No." Was Which that a makes crisis of sense. conscience, or was that a financial decision? No, I doubt that. that I strongly doubt the conscience. I, you know, I think he was... I think, a breakaway. He, you know. Yeah, I think he was crazy. I literally think he was losing his mind. Yeah. The man used to draw. He was actually a, an amazing artist. Yeah. Um, first bad sign. But yeah. Drew... Yeah. <laughs> drew horrible things. So what did he draw? He would draw what he saw. So one thing that he drew, and it's in his diary, mm-hmm. is miles of trees with people hung on it. And you're like, what the fuck is wrong with this dude? Like, all the people he hung for the day, he's like, mm, I'll draw you this. Think, so was it that, or was it uh, like a high schooler who, who hates his classmates? <laughs> Maybe. Do we know? Uh, I don't recall entirely. He would have been a 
slaughterer. I don't actually know that at all. That is based on nothing. I, I know there's strike that. Yeah, actually. no, he, he there's people who wrote about him I who were visitors. I mean, genocide, one hundred percent. Yeah, there's monks and stuff who would uh-huh. visit uh, from the Spanish. Monks? There were si- monks. Oh, oh yeah, 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 like yeah, uh, missionaries. Yeah, yeah. Okay. would be sent to do missionary work, and they wrote other, you know, say like this guy. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Uh, the Italians had already said, no, we're not sending you. The Spanish, I think, just didn't care. They just wanted someone to go. And they're like, oh, this guy probably ain't going to make it. Send him. But, yeah. you know, they okay. came back. The Spanish Armada at the time was the strongest Armada in the world. Why did you think there was a smart idea to say, hey, this is now all mine? Mm-hmm. They came over, easily defeated him, captured him, brought him back. Threw him at the bottom of the Spanish castle, and he died down. Right. Yeah, I bet he expected them to not uh, put effort into it. Which is insane. And he's, But the whole time he's been playing up that it's super lucrative and, like, the best place and super good. And so, like, yeah. breaking away, if you're going to... You, sending you should, gold back. Right, like yeah. t- Not even a little bit. Tons of gold. Like, go to Spain and look at the churches, mm-hmm. and they're head to toe in gold. Hmm. Yeah. Because of the horrible things that they did over there. But, I mean... Did did he get a lot of gold? Because I know like later explorers got a lot of silver, for sure, right? There were, that was a big thing. I think in general they were bringing back tons of gold. Okay, but when he found the islands, like he like was like, oh look, there's these islands here, yeah. and they sort of you know the natives were bringing him gold. Mm-hmm. He was like, there's gold, yeah, and he sent the ship back with what okay. he had found, yeah, right. And was like, we need more people to come. Yeah. So he sent, they sent more people, and they enslaved everybody there. Well, yeah. And then that's when you started to see Hernan Cortez and the others go to Mexico right. and start moving further south. Because mm-hmm. I know during kind of that period... Oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I only have more questions, but yeah. you're, you sound like you're in the middle of saying something. Um, I know the Portuguese were moving down Africa around mm-hmm. the same time as the Spanish were moving. Well, they went around the exactly. horn of Africa, which right. was dumb. <laughs> took well, them way longer yeah so I wonder what like where because uh, the style of European slavery was new mm-hmm. at a certain point how did that was he you know how is he getting this I, or where was he is he inventing it or did you say that coming the, from? what do you mean the style of European like the style of uh, so like what grew into like the... slaves? Because the they slaves already had slaves. Everybody had slaves. Yeah. Well, there's, there's lots of different slavery, right? But there's... The, the way that they were doing slavery mm-hmm. is different than, like, the Romans did slavery. Mm-hmm. So the Romans yeah. did slavery where you were a slave and your kids not, were not necessarily slaves or you tended to get... Uh, uh, what do you call it? I don't think freed at a certain point. But, like, I know for... In the, Amer- in the U.S., mm-hmm. they're... Most slavery sort of developed out of, started out as like the indentured servant system. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then it got, that got system got replaced where people would have debts and then they would possibly work their, work out of those debts. But that was like not considered, or that wasn't uh, exploitative enough. So that's mm-hmm. when the slavery system started developing and the dehumanizing, dehumanizing of people too. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, Egypt, ancient Egypt had slaves for a yeah. long, long time. Mostly people that were conquered. Um, they're like, mm-hmm. well, you lost. You're all slaves. Yeah, right. But, yeah. Um, but also, I mean, as far as Europeans, they were already doing this in Africa. And, like, had already been kind of, like, coming up with different forms of slavery. I mean, the stuff that happened in Africa is, like, really atrocious. That right, don't yeah. talk about either. The Congo. Right. With so a, Belgium, how yeah. they were doing stuff. Oh man, it's horrible. The king that like just was like, oh, this is all mine. Yeah. Uh, even the Dutch, my Dutch friends that are watching, it's true. You know this. Um, you know when you go when you when they went down to Africa, the Dutch actually did some of the most atrocious things, and I think it's it's amazing. Like not necessarily amazing, it's astounding to me that. They were able to do all that because I have a lot of friends from the Netherlands, and you meet them, they're like the nicest people you yeah. ever meet. They're yeah. so nice. And I look at them, like, and it's so hard for me to comprehend that their great, great, you know, 
grandparent. Well, I don't know. I mean, right. A little further than that. I mean, shit. We are not our ancestors. Yeah, That's exactly. Sure. But it's it's hard sometimes to imagine it. Like I, you can go to the Netherlands, meet these people. You've been to yeah. Amsterdam, mm-hmm. and you look, and you're like, how did these people do all that? Right. Like, that's so crazy because mm-hmm. they're polar opposites. Now. Yeah. They're like very welcoming kind of country. Right. For sure, too. Like the number of people who were engaging in that too. Like back then, there was rulers and there was people king ruled in the Netherlands. So most people were not having anything to do with they were with colonialism. Yeah. Uh-huh. In the Netherlands, they were being exploited by the, their own way. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the same people who were exploiting them locally were exploiting people internationally. It's yeah. called history, right? Just like. Always repeats. This is what happens when you have whiskey. Yeah, right. You start <laughs> some strong stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sneaks sneaks up. I will admit. So get into like it was like old a, politics. It was yeah. like a one finger pour. <laughs> yeah, really. Yes, you on that? I told you. I said, be careful with this strong I, whiskey. I believed I was. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm doing all right. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Uh, you wanted to talk about some specific things. Today. Did I? Yes. Yeah, both of you. Perhaps. Uh, <laughs> Scott, you wanted to talk about teamwork. Yeah. You wanted to talk Love about it. how to successfully work in a team. Yeah. How like, the hell do you do that? How do you do that? And in what context uh, do we want to be broad or or toy? Well, maybe just to start off of like, mm-hmm. let's say you got five people yeah. and you want to work together on something. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to know is like, what have you found or have you had that experience where you've got a group of people um, Mm -hmm. that are trying to work together? Mm -hmm. What makes it work? Yeah, yeah. that's a great question. Um, When I was a kid, you know, I had, I think a couple things that, that helped me tremendously. Um, Uh I was in Taekwondo Yeah, Uh, and that takes a lot of discipline. Yeah. And I feel like in order for a team to work, you need discipline. Mm -hmm. And then I was also a Boy Scout, an Eagle Scout, really. Yeah. And you need teamwork to complete some of those yeah, tasks. Yeah, okay. And so I felt like when I was able to put those together, and just as I've grown, I've learned, and as, you know, I, I, I've opened my businesses, and I've learned from my mistakes. You right. Know, I'm, no one's perfect, and I've definitely made many mistakes as an owner and as a business person. Um, but what I learned the most was that you have to work together. You know, these are not... Yeah just your employees, they, they literally, you have to respect and understand that they are helping you tremendously right, keep yeah. your businesses afloat. Not necessarily afloat, but you know, make them successful. Yeah. Uh, without them, they're, you're, you're nothing. And right. that is, I think, that uh, something that people forget. Right. Um, so, you know, sometimes it, it's, I feel like you have to lead by example. You know, if, mm-hmm. if you want other people to be working and doing things, but you also have to be getting in there. Yeah. You can't just be like, hey, do this. You know, if, I, if I'm if i busy, I'll ask them. But if I have the time, I will help and yeah. I will definitely get in there. Teamwork comes with trust, in my yeah. opinion. I don't know what, what your I, you know, accounts are on these, but I'm, I'm kind of curious. Totally agree. Yeah. I think for me, trust is like the bedrock of 100%. doing it. But then to make that, to have that trust possible, you can't just expect it. It's like... To me, there's got to be things that you do that everyone does to help that is like the standard of how people interact with each other Mm -hmm. to help build trust, right? You can't rely on, oh, they trust me. Yeah. They'll they'll understand what I'm doing, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Sure. And you should be very open about why you're doing what you're doing so that it's Mm -hmm. very clear to everyone that I'm doing this. And so that they can also say, I don't think that is actually, you thought that that was going to be helpful for me or, you know, what I want, what I want. You need to be able to get that feedback right away of this. Yeah. You misunderstood. I, I misunderstood what I was doing. Um, that's not what, and that helps build trust. What about for you? What are ways that you've make that trust develop or keep that trust, either build that trust or keep it from falling that's a that's a great question. I think it's see it's harder for me at times um, because I am an owner, yeah, and at the same time, mm-hmm. you know I do believe in to an extent boundaries between yeah. um, yep. and and very it's important. 
Yeah, and it's hard. It's hard because you want to connect with your employees. You want to them to feel like, oh, you know, like I, I, I trust him and I respect him. But you also want to make sure that you're not too cool. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to be that that okay. that cool dad. boss. Yeah, because it, it, <laughs> it could it could affect sort of, it could affect the, the business. Like exactly. Yeah, you, you it's like a parent almost. It's yeah. it's crazy, but it is to an extent like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's such a fine line. Like you know, you you don't want to overstep those boundaries, right? Because you could put yourself in a predicament. So you're you're there, and and for me, especially someone who has businesses, you know, I've got about 22 employees, and you have to figure out how can I correlate, how can I relate, mm-hmm. and what I've done before, especially for team building, is sometimes we'll do a name game, mm-hmm. goofy child yeah. stuff, but it sure. works, or we'll do things like I'll take them out to. An outing, and we'll go right. to Sox game, yeah. or Never you know, that's right. yeah, appreciation for your employees <laughs> for what they're doing. Buy them uh, a nice meal, yeah, you know, and just talk to them yeah. like normal people, like anyone else. You know, the, you don't want them to feel like you're some foreigner that's just coming right. in who doesn't care. Christopher you're, Columbus, you know, yeah, <laughs> you don't want them to think you're Christopher Columbus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I come in with a sword and like. <laughs> But the last um, thing I want my employees to <laughs> that would be cr- yeah, that would be wild. Um, <laughs> I think I wouldn't have any employees anymore. Yeah, just um, let them know. Here's my goal. Yeah. I don't want to be as bad as Christopher. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. Right. And they're like, well, That's that hard. shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. But now yeah. I'm concerned. <laughs> Not too no. Some days I wake up and just like, all right, she can yeah. full Christopher Columbus these days. They're like, you know, I'm looking somewhere between Stalin and Columbus. Yes. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, it, you know, I, I think I think you have to build the trust and, and teamwork. Teamwork is super important for yeah. anything to, mm-hmm. to work out. But um, but that that takes trust. I think that's the, the bedrock, just like right. you said. Yeah, transparency is very important. Financial yeah. transparency when it's necessary. Mm. In my experience, yeah. How so? Doing, deal, doing deals in the art world. Oh, know, okay. When mm. you when you're trading with uh, dealers, gallerists, managers, people who you're splitting, you know, people who get a commission, of right? It, people who get a cut of your work because they've done the, the hard part of finding the client, right? Yeah. So when you're working with them, it's like this transparency is so necessary because so many artists. Uh, from what I've heard and you know occasionally even experience a sort of paranoia around that subject you know am I being taken advantage of yes right you know you hear so many stories everyone you know well not everyone Uh, okay (laughs) Uh, Brian Wilson you know uh, the Beach Boys uh, yeah Leonard Cohen it's like how many how many names can you name of people whose managers took them so uh, you know of course as any artist has this sort of idea that you know, they, they could be taken at any moment, that transparency becomes super necessary in order to have right. like a successful you know, uh, business as in the art world. So gallerists being transparent is very, very smart. Yep. It feels like that kind of situation is where it becomes a standard frequently for trust to be expected in one direction mm-hmm. and not in the other direction. And, and yeah, I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. Th- no, that's it. Uh, what do you mean by that? Where, um, you know, the... The if the uh, artist asks for things to help them mm-hmm. trust the manager more, yeah, it is viewed as a lack of trust by the artist, and so mm-hmm. they're wrong, and uh, the manager can uh, what do you call it exploit that case by case. I would say I'd say there's so much paranoia in the art world. I'm sure. Artists are just so neurotic and right. uh, self-obsessed, and uh, well, and managers should be being <laughs> extra like, open too much. about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little too much, being too, too transparent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think um, no, I think that a lot of you know a lot of artists who you encounter, you know, they they meet the stereotypes that we know, and they they do, and you know, because of that. You know, everyone has to adjust their business sense and acumen accordingly. You know, you have to right. be more transparent than is necessary, right. even because of that personality type. Um, yeah. 
I can see that. But so many have been taken. Yes. Even though they have that pers- personality. And we're all expecting it too. So there's, right. you know, there are so many contributing factors. It's it's a weird it's a weird profession. But I think this applies to a lot of other professions too. You know, musicians, all sorts of all sorts of people who work, uh, you know, with uh, sort of handlers, sort of figures. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, or when there's a big difference in the power dynamic, uh-huh. right? Does that ever happen for, like, brokering? I've is there very lucky are both parties usually of the same stature, or are they? That's a, that's a good question. Um, I think there's definitely there, there's a lot of trust that needs to be made right, in there. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you're not 100% sure if someone's trying to take you for a ride. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, especially in Mexico, and I don't feel like they do this as much with people that they really respect, but it happens a lot where someone will, will do kind of backdoors deals where they'll say, oh, yeah, well, we're going to have you work this market. And then all of a sudden you hear that somebody else is going to work that market. Yeah, okay. like, How is that possible? And I'm not talking about just myself. I'm right. pro- actually, I've, I've, I've rarely experienced that, and I'm very fortunate to not have had that. Mm-hmm. I also am the kind of person where I'm. I'm a really nice guy. I'm very upfront. You know, I'm. I'm. What you see is what you get. Like I am very transparent yeah. in how I. You know. Yeah, I get the I sense. Am. You don't seem like a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to look like that. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, deep down. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I bottle it up. I try extra hard. <laughs> Wise. Yeah. Cut that out. No, I'm, just, I'm sorry. Come on. I'm sorry. Edit that. That's going to come back to haunt me. No, it's not. I'm In any case, I'm messing with you. I know. But, um, but you know, um, I've seen it before yeah. with other people. And they're yeah. like, well, this guy has your product. And you're saying you have this product. They're like, what? And the funny thing is, is that it just kind of slides. Mm. And I'm, I'm not like that. See, I think that's why there's a couple things. I think there's a lot of respect yeah. for what me and my family have yeah. done. Like, you have to understand that we were the first Latino, first Mexican liquor store in the whole state. Awesome. Like, we helped build the tequila and mezcal right, market. Yeah. Like, cool. a lot of what you see in this market is because of the, the, the influence that we had. And so, when we work with people down in Mexico... Um, they want to work with us because you're, they know you're not fly by night. Exactly, and at the same, like they know I, I, I'm a straight shooter, and at mm-hmm. the same time, they're like, "Look, he's Mexican, and he cares about the products." And they, you know, just kind of a cultural thing. They yeah. want to work with other people that are are, are Mexican, right? And that are actually going to do justice to the products, and that's what I try to do. But at the same time, you know, yeah, there's that trust, there's that uh, sincerity, mm-hmm. but I'm also the kind of person. Where I'm really nice, but I always tell people, don't step on my fucking toes. Right, yeah. yeah seen, because seen, seen, if you burn the bridge, own. you're burning the bridge, right, and sure. I will take you down with it. <laughs> right. Like, because, you know, if you're taking advantage of my genuine nature, and or if you are if you assume that I'm just a pushover, far from it. Right, you know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a very nice guy, but... How frustrating I, to have to prove that. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I, I you know, I really most, most, depends on where you're from. But what I'll tell some people, of the most uncomfortable shit that I've experienced. Yeah. Having to prove that to people, I really yeah. hate that. Yeah. And I, you and know, people make me have to be an asshole. Like yeah. That, right? Like really what the that. heck? And I, and I'll, you know, in the end, I tell people like, look, I might not seem like like uh like I'm you know a tough guy. I don't know how how else to explain it, but you have to understand that I spent most of my life. In Little Village. Yeah. And Little Village has changed a lot, but has always Mm -hmm. been a somewhat more rough neighborhood and was way more rough when I was a kid. And I, you know, most of my life have had people that have tried to pick on me or do other things. And there's two people that I've noticed that, you know, had have gone through that. There's those that run. And those that stand their ground, you know, mm-hmm. fight or flight kind of thing. Yeah. And I've always been the one that stand my ground. I'm yeah. like, you know what? I'm not going to let you walk all over me because that that's just not who I am. Like, I'm going to show you that I, like, I'm here and do not threaten me. You think your martial arts background yeah. helps with that? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Honest, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Honest though, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, I first degree it's black belt. Kind of so. designed to do that, right? Yeah. Now. Yeah, I mean, I, I took martial arts specifically 
because I was like, you know, I'm, I'm tired of people um, trying to demean me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I wasn't a very tall kid. When, I'm not very tall right now. Mm-hmm. But as a kid, you know, that's a big thing. Yeah. Especially when you move to the suburbs and everybody's like way taller than you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, I'm going to... You know, need to. I'm gonna do what I need to do oh, yeah. to it's make sure that I power. learn. Yeah, my brother-in-law has owned, yeah, owned several martial arts gyms. He's, he's a badass sensei. <laughs> cool guy. Yeah, I had that, um, stuff, that stuff saves kids' lives. It's really cool stuff. A hundred percent. You know, I had a one of my um, teachers, amazing guy. This guy trained in Japan, and um, was trained in Taekwondo, Hapkido. Mm-hmm. and jiu-jitsu and hapkido which you know i don't know if you guys are familiar with it but it, it was known as the the women's art okay. mm. because they did not allow in japan for women to learn martial arts okay so what did they do well they taught themselves anyways but they made it look like a dance so hapkido works very heavily on utilizing the enemy's uh um energy against them mm-hmm. when somebody's throwing a punch you allow that energy to go through you, and you take them right down with it. So that was very useful when he would do that. And he would actually blindfold us. And obviously, it wasn't going full force, but he would sure. take swings at us, and you had to feel it and kind of allow your body to flow hmm. with it like a dance. Yeah. Um, How well did you do with that? Um, I would have taken a lot of smacks. I would have taken oh, smacks. yeah. Trust me, you get hit a lot. <laughs> he would purposely put me with people that were like, Six two, yeah, <laughs> and he's like, you gotta fight him. And when you're shorter, you usually are faster. Uh-huh. Um, but the taller person has more range. Right, yeah. their legs are, you know, like you can't. How do you compete? Mm-hmm. So you just have really the only way is to wear them out. That's okay. what I would do. I just wear them out, and I get my ass kicked over and over and over until I finally realize. Why am I constantly going in? They're going to continue to kick my ass. Right. Mm-hmm. You got to wear them out, and then you go in. And if you have that that energy, and you're faster than them, let them come to you. Yeah. And they will eventually fall. Yeah, that's strategizing yeah. at an early age, and that mind that must have given you. That's that's a rare treat. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, that, I think more kids should do martial arts. I think that's. I agree. That's smart stuff. I agree. It's like philosophy. You know, introducing it. Kind of philosophy of the body. It's yeah. Pretty awesome. Sorry, I was thinking. For, <laughs> yeah. I was smiling for a second. I was thinking in my head about. I don't know if you guys watch Seinfeld, mm-hmm. but there was a whole episode where uh, Kramer takes Taekwondo, or, or I think he takes karate, and he's he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm one of the best in my class, <laughs> and oh. so. And I'm, yeah, Elaine <laughs> comes and he's like kicking all these children's right. ass. <laughs> like a bunch of 12 yeah, year olds. Right. And he's massive and just <laughs> destroyed me. So funny. Oh, man. Now that now that show right there is a classic. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised uh, Friends has gotten the resurgence. Mm. Uh, and it's like. There's a big difference between those two shows. Yeah, I was never a Friends kind of person. I mean, it's okay. It's a little funny, but Seinfeld is just, man, so witty. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. (laughs) Yeah. It's, yeah, that's unique stuff. Yeah. It's funny. Friends was sort of like, it was on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, at the time, especially when I was a kid, right? It was like, yeah, I guess this is funny. (laughs) <laughs> I'm yeah. laughing, yeah. and uh, but like now, I've seen so many old things that I used to sure. think was so funny, and now I'm like, uh, uh, what was it? Um, are you being served? I was watching some like British comedies when I was a kid uh, from the I think that's a like '70s comedy or something mm. or '60s or something, mm. and now I've watched it. And I'm like, this, this isn't that good. <laughs> this isn't that funny. Well, I mean, at least you weren't watching Frasier or something. Yeah, but... yeah. Oh, I, I don't. I never didn't go under- that route. Huh? I did not go that route. No, I know. I could not understand why yeah. people loved Frasier. What a horribly boring show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's in type. The Wasp. Who knows? People could be watching this right now and saying, Man, right, what yeah. a horribly boring show. Horribly boring <laughs> <laughs> that I'll should be the name. Yeah, of but this. we're not a, a sitcom. <laughs> yeah. I'll say it when I'm editing. 
That yeah. could be that could be the podcast I name. Know. New name. What a horribly boring <laughs> show. This is horrible. <laughs> this is horrible. That's the name of the new yeah. Show, yeah. <laughs> That's the, the title for this Who episode. Of this? Yeah. Yeah. Who the fuck? Whose idea of this? was this? Yeah, that's a funny episode. Now back to who the fuck thought of this? Yeah. <laughs> who do these guys think? They are? Uh, again, going back to Seinfeld, like mm-hmm. when they pitched it. Like, oh right, yeah. yeah. What is the show about? Nothing. What? Well, this it's is more or less, nothing. you know, similar concept. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there happens to be a painting being made. Right. I'm not giving any instructional. We don't talk about art almost ever on the show. <laughs> and I really like that. Yeah. There you go. I'm almost thinking of barring all artists from the show. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of want to be painted sometimes. Okay. And I think that's part of why yeah. I wanted to name the show Painting Everybody and not Adam Holzworth or Painting. You should do an episode so, where I, you're I, sitting here. Yeah, I think that, oh, is, yeah. that is part of my intention. I like that. You want to bring other people into the hot seat. That's cool. I guess all the seats are hot. <laughs> <laughs> With the AC off. With the AC off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. the AC off. Yeah. yeah, it's really hot today. Yeah. yeah. Well, not even the fact that, that it's hot, it's humid. Like, yes. We're, I feel like we are in like a like a Tibetan sweatshop or something. Mm-hmm. It's like, I wonder what it is that's causing this stifling. <laughs> like some like nothing's like. moving and, uh, <laughs> in the city. It seems like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Well, when it's this hot, there's two things that happen. People just shut down or they get very angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's wild. Which do you uh, tend towards? I shut down. Yeah. I'm yeah, like, yeah, oh, I don't want to do anything. It's gross outside. I find a fan. Yeah. I'm using fans a lot more. Yeah? My AC is not as strong. I moved this year. Yeah, I sit in front of it. And my AC is not as strong as it used to be. Okay. And so now <laughs> I've got a fan, and I'm like, oh, why was I doing so much AC? That was <laughs> such a waste. Fan's very good. I When I lived up north, uh, this was a long time ago, but when I lived up there, mm-hmm. lived in a very shitty apartment, and it came already with an AC. Yeah. Like it was a big old AC. I was like, great. But I had to choose between turning on anything in the oh, house right. or the AC. Yes. Uh-huh. So if I wanted to watch TV, that <laughs> AC had to go off. Yeah. Okay. If I wanted to turn on the lights to yeah. cook at night, the AC had to go off. Jesus. <laughs> and it was just because it would just cut everything. Right, yeah. Oh my God, it was a nightmare. Jesus. It was horrible. I was like, God, this place is such... A... You know, when you first, when I first moved in, I was like... Oh, I, you know, this is kind of nice. Where was that when you said North? This was uh, Lakeview. Mm-hmm. And I lived there for about three years. And, you know, How like you I like said, uh, I hated it. Yeah. I think when I first moved in, I liked it. I lived in Lakeview. Yeah, and it, it, it eventually just was, I had so many problems up there, just constant issues. Like I found a prostitute in my backyard. Uh-huh. You know, I, a homeless guy tried to burn my house down because I told him that he couldn't steal my neighbor's beer. Mm. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I'll burn his house down. Some crazy dude on like acid or I don't know what tried to break into my house. And when he couldn't. Sorry about that. He, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, it was you. <laughs> that explains the scratches on the face. Because literally what this guy did when he couldn't break in, he mm. took a rock, threw it through one of my neighbor's cars started peeling the glass off from the front and like oh my God. like a worm through the front glass oh, into the car God. and God. the police came. Yeah. You know, just the most ridiculous stuff oh, my God. happened to me when I lived up there and I could not believe. I was like, this is literally borderline just... I, like, yeah, what? that's a weird so for, Yeah, I was like, am I... You know, in purgatory right now? Yeah, like, right. what is going on? Why is all this happening? Yeah. <laughs> like, it didn't make sense. And now I live, you know, in Pilsen. And yeah. I have no issues. Like, right. I, you know, I had my bike stolen once. That really pissed me off. But I haven't had any other major crimes. Yeah. I'm not finding prostitutes in my backyard or anything, you know. <laughs> Thank God. Um, yeah, just crazy. But I feel like I've used that word a lot. Crazy, crazy absurd, yeah. Right, yeah. insane. Yeah. <laughs> Ludicrous. <laughs> we we uh, we're still allowed to use those words, right? I think so. Uh, I think occasionally. Occasionally, I don't think I we're think supposed they're... to use crazy. I think. Um, yeah. I think it's I think certainly I'm going full, out of I think favor. I'm full of shit. I don't think that you're not supposed to. Uh, I think that. I will say that I think all there's things... context for everything, and I think that you're. Yeah, I think I think what happened to me is definitely kind of was crazy. Like all of those things were crazy. Yeah. You know, like no 
sane person would try to burn my house down. Yeah. <laughs> I was sitting, I remember sitting there and, um, like the fire department came. Yeah. They're banging in my back window. And I was like, heck, I opened the door. I said, what happened? They're like, you live here? I said, yeah. I said, I'm in my house. <laughs> and they're like, you're really lucky. They said a neighbor saw some guy trying to burn your house Jesus down. Jesus Christ. And I was like, what guy? And he was like, the, a homeless guy. I was like, oh my God. The guy that I just politely said, please don't steal my neighbor's beer. <laughs> that he was like on his porch, like, oh, beer. I was like, yo, like, please don't steal his beer. And he's like, oh, fuck you. Left. Or thought, I, so I thought. And he's, they, they, the, the fire department told me, they said, if we were five minutes, if it took us five more minutes to get here, they said the whole house would have been engulfed. Well, how do you know how he was trying to do it? He took the um, recycling bin, okay, and pushed it up to the side. Yeah, threw a match in there, Jeez. and it lit up. And a little bit of the house yeah. was just it's, starting. It's yeah, right when they got there, they said, and huh. they took it out instantly. But they were like, "Yeah, five minutes, and the whole house would have been engulfed because it was a wooden house." Oh, fuck. So yeah, Crazy. so it was like the last, you know. Yeah. The last wooden house left on the north side. Right, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to let people steal beer from now on? Yeah, I know. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> now I still would tell them, go fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny. You have no way of knowing when this stuff's going to happen. Yeah, who you run into. True. And uh, what they're like. We have to be more conscious of that these days, I feel like. Yeah. Which, which part? Being uh, about, you know, you don't know who you're who you meet and what they're capable of mm-hmm. yep. and know how far they go on you know when they're upset another reason why I started this show I mean you saw um, <laughs> I mean or not saw maybe you, you read uh, the Tribune about the recent like increase in robberies on the red line mm-hmm. yes of course yeah, yeah and like they said that they you know at gunpoint these people tried to rob uh, people on the train and the assailants were stabbed by the victim the mm. victims pulled out knives. Oh, that's good news. Yeah, which is good, but at the same time, you also, that's another <laughs> thing, like, you have to be conscious of who and what you're doing. Or, yeah. You know, if, don't try to start a fight with random people because yeah. it could be the nicest person on the trade, but they could have a knife on them. Right. And, like, they clearly weren't afraid at all and mm. stabbed these assailants. Hmm. Well, the first guy, I, I think, went to the hospital. I think he got, uh, they, he stabbed two of them and then, they got the knife out of him and stabbed him. So he what about the gun? Well. Uh, yeah, exactly. I don't know. <laughs> like, was it a toy gun? I yeah. don't know. They said they had guns. Okay. Or they said that one person in, in both of those ah, incidents, because okay. they're like groups. Okay. They're like three, four people. Okay. One of them in each of those uh, instances had a gun. And I'm like, if you had the gun, I don't know. Maybe they... No. They don't know how Maybe to they shoot didn't. it, or they're yeah. scared to, to kill someone. Right. Which, I mean, of course, who wouldn't be? Like, right. you're trying to rob them, you kill them. Now it's, it's worse. Yeah, it's way worse. Um, but, you know, that... that Maybe they didn't think that the knife was that much big of a risk or something? Or they, you know... Not, I'll tell you from personal experience, uh, from Taekwondo and somebody that... And, as, like I said, as a Boy Scout, learning how to shoot guns and stuff, mm-hmm. you're more likely to get shot from a distance than up close if you know how to take the gun away from them. Okay. Oh, now, okay. I'm not saying everybody knows how to do yeah, that, how to do that yeah. but if someone is right next to you and they have a gun um, and you, you're trained, um, you, you're less likely to get shot yeah. than from a distance. So, but... I don't know. Unless all these people just happen to be martial artists with right, knives on right, them. Right, exactly. On the train. <laughs> Trained martial artists. Trained martial artists. Yeah. yeah. Just cruising the train, hoping yeah. for uh, a fight. It was pretty funny. I, I do remember that uh, the same instructor, he's, he would show us how to disarm someone with a gun. Mm-hmm. He's like, go like this, and you take it out. Yeah. And then he's like, boom, boom. Oh, he accidentally shot himself. And then he like kept it in the guy's hand the whole time. Puts him down, and then he's like, "I don't know what happened, officer. He shot himself." <laughs> I was like, "It's crazy." Like, yeah. but you know, it, it's it's sad to think that we have that it's gotten to that point where we need to even know that stuff. You know, I, I don't think that it's it's something that we should um, have, Shouldn't to, have to. Of course, yeah. But what? I mean, how else? Well, there's been a lot of how else I can mean, we construct a world? People get <laughs> robbed and stuff, right? Through it happens time. all the time. Um, 
I wonder, you know, I've some there. I know there's definitely some. I don't know how much. There's some groups or there's some researchers who are like, oh, per capita, violence is going down over time. Yeah. Um, I know there's that kind of study. Um, I mean, Chicago statistically, I guess. Yeah. Compared to the 70s. Yeah. Has mm-hmm. lower crime. Like the number one place for crime in the whole country is St. Louis. Nobody really talks about that. Yeah. That's because of per capita. Per capita. But oh, okay. still, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's not a serious crime problem going on right now. Right. It, you know, across not just even the, the country. I feel like it's an international problem at this point. Where and I and I think to an extent maybe that comes down to um, the pandemic. You know, it, it like yeah. there's so much stress and anxiety. A lot of people. Yeah, there's a lot of anxiety out there these yes. days, and people are like sick and tired of. Uh, dealing with it and mm-hmm. you're, you're hearing more and more about all these things happening yeah um, pandemic global warming too yeah mm-hmm. um, the way the world economy works nowadays I think a lot of things it's all interconnected yeah as much as it has directly affected us and I mean imagine how it's how much more it's affected other people right so true it, tenfold hundredfold right. and uh, there are incredibly disparate situations for people who are just there is no clear escape plan right. <laughs> there is not an escape there's no hatch. sanctuary there's no savings account there's nothing like, yeah it, there is survival like food stamps are not enough like like for some people it's like that's just they are they are just deeply deeply unlucky or you know that describes one right. situation. Sure. Not, that, that's nothing. That I know there are so many situations I couldn't possibly understand. Yeah. So uh, uh, that level of desperation is going to lead to the most heinous acts, and um, that's what we're living with now. Yeah. Like, was it easier to be a refugee in the past um, compared to now? I don't know. I think it was I don't know. I feel like it, it was like easier it was. to get refuge. Right. Right. But I wouldn't necessarily say as a whole what it was easier. Um, I feel like they still had to go through the same process of uh-huh. the traveling and dangerous right. yeah. you know, trains or coyotes or people that were yeah. taking them over the borders. But to get refuge and to stay, yes, I would say it was probably refugees easier. Refugee is a good sense. word to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Domestic refugees. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And international. <laughs> You're right. And international. Yeah. Refugees. And I mean, even I that as well. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Are uh, just like I was thinking, Vietnamese refugees, mm-hmm. and yeah. just like there's been many, but I don't necessarily have a total viewpoint of like all the people who are trying to be seek refuge in the '70s, let's say, compared to now. That's true. I don't know it well enough. I, I never just do like. Back then. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I mean, but also <laughs> think about, like, think about, um, like, just poverty and homelessness, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. what we don't, we don't talk about it all that much, but we see it more and more these days, I feel like, than we did just even 10 years ago. And one decision there's, could lead to yeah. homelessness. Yeah, there's so many more <laughs> homeless people out there. Yeah. And that wasn't yeah. going on just even a couple of years ago, you know, right down the street from me. It's a lot of homeless people, mm. and there used to be less. Right and now, there's way more. Yeah, and like I think great. in the '80s and maybe '90s, there was a lot. Or in Chicago, it seemed like there was a lot, but that might just be a media thing. Mm-hmm. And then it seemed like there was less. Now it seems like there's more. Is that just something related to um, uh, Ram closing the mental institutions? Yeah, or that's right. I, I feel like it's and homeless federal and state, state stuff too, too, right? And what? And the, the, that second part. Federal and state, like definitely. Uh-huh. I mean, ever since Reagan, they said right. yeah, well, yeah. everything yes. out, and like there's no mental institutions and stuff like there used to be. Yeah. Now I'm not saying that everything that was going on in those institutions were correct. yeah, right. Of course, yeah, there was sure. some very everything's fucked up. Yeah, there was some some things are than other things. Questionable things going yeah, on. Put people in uh, and electrotherapy people and stuff. Questionable things. Yeah, but. I mean, without having those facilities, now we see more people on the streets that are homeless, 
and they have mental you know disorders mm-hmm. and they need to uh, yes. be properly taken care of and we're not we're not providing that right. Right. and then on top of that you know you've got the pandemic and the lack of jobs and rent going up and everything else now you're seeing just a, such an increase and I don't think people are, are, are really doing the data on how severe it is yeah I feel mm-hmm. like and homelessness like what do people account for homelessness are they accounting for just people they see on the street right or are they accounting for people that are living in their cars yep. or couch uh, surfing with families yeah. and family mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah it's, it's a very interesting topic but that's a that's a rabbit hole right there and, and um, yeah, I what's the solution <laughs> uh, I mean you could present a million solutions how are you going to implement them true and how how are you gonna how are you gonna, fund how are you gonna check the ethics of them once they're in place, because people are I don't know cor- corruptible and uh, money yeah. money when it comes in when it comes flooding in in the millions and yeah. you got an office full of people to pay in order to keep ten homeless people off the street <laughs> it's it's gonna yeah. get those people true yeah your, <laughs> your uh, your idea, whatever ideas you have to improve things, uh, you got to. I don't mean to sound no, uh, but too, right. you know, uh, bleak or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Optimistic. Yeah. No, I get <laughs> I'm it. Kidding. I understand. I get it for sure. That's not the word. I think I'm looking for something. Uh, it's like you. I still believe that people are going to do you know, the best they can and the right things. And a lot of people are going to be helped and saved. I don't think that this is like some kind of, not, we're past saving or something. So I think that these organizations do help quite a lot. I just, uh, you know, we get back to that transparency idea. Yeah. <laughs> how are they, how are they distributing these funds? You know, when, when I give somebody $20 on the street, uh, who has who's holding a clipboard, um, would it have been or a month if I sign up to give you know yeah. a month at once a month twenty dollars to their organization? Would I just be better off handing somebody on the street twenty dollars who's asking for money? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I know yeah, there was. I don't know because when does I mean I know that you know it's that, that, we've got a snowball effect. So yeah, every little bit helps. It's just I think the answer is sort of yes, probably to both. Sure, like both both are true. It's like there's, there's not one thing that discredits the other, but it sometimes feels that way. And the feeling is it can't be enough to sort of drive your actions like that, make you um, cynical. And, yeah. and, you know, there's something people have tried those organizations. I mean, I'm sort of arguing with myself here. Yeah, but, yeah. but these organizations, I think, um, you know, they are meaningful. They do help a lot. Uh, my confusion about their finances and their numbers doesn't discredit them. It's just. I'm pretty damn curious. Sure. Some of that too might be like, they're doing things, then they might be doing good things, but is there a better way to do things? Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, there's always a better way. To yeah, do there's things. always a better way to do things. <laughs> it's just, it, it always comes down to resources. Mm-hmm. Are we able to reach that goal? Yeah. I don't know if you saw, I saw a video earlier today. It seemed kind of crazy, it was kind of funny reading the comments at least when you know when, when I saw the video but mm-hmm. Saudi Arabia is talking about building this like 75 mile long wall that people are going to live in and it's like going to be crazy like just a long line and it's like 20 stories high or might have been even taller than that I, it looked huge and the whole right. top was all trees okay and the sides are like reflective glass, so okay. it reflects back the heat, but you could see outside. Okay. Mm-hmm. And people, it, it said it would, it would be able to have four million people live okay. in the 75 mile long strip. Uh-huh. And I was like, what on earth? Um, and in the middle of the desert. Right, and, yeah. And it was like supposed to be sustainable, you don't need cars, right. you know. Um, Is it self cooling? Yeah, that's what they were saying. There so was like, like the caves in Spain that people live in. Is that, do people doing still live in that? caves? Yeah, yeah. Did they're super, that? yeah. Hippies or? Yeah. Okay. Maybe. But, uh, yeah, definitely. Interesting. Um, they're, 
they sort of self cool and they self the, se- yeah. self regulate the underground. Stuff like right, that. Sure. Uh, I wonder how they do the water. Side of mountains yeah. or something. I don't know. Yeah, something, yeah. Huh. I, don't, I don't remember what it is. Shit, I wish I could remember. I mean, it was supposed to be like all green, basically. Okay. okay. But it seemed interesting. But then, you know, how is it going to work? And then right, you start. Yeah. It was. It's like a four trillion dollar. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. project that they're going to start. Like mm-hmm. four trillion. How is that even logical? And how can you know? How much money are you putting in? How does yeah. how do people like? Is it producing the food too? I don't know. Okay. I, you know, I, it was a short twenty-second video. Okay, yeah, yeah. interesting. But the comments were quite funny. Like, okay, yeah. You know, one of the comments was like "Rest in peace, birds," because it's reflecting right, glass. Yeah. I'm like, right, I'm gonna kill off all the birds, I guess. Yes. And then people were like, "Yeah, what's gonna happen with migration of other animals?" Is like that's right, another yeah. great point. And then uh, you had a comment where the guy was like. He's like, where do you live? And he's like, bro, just keep walking down, all right? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, just keep walking down the wall. You can't miss me. And they're like, yeah, it's, you're right. Just straight down, 75 miles. Huh. <laughs> so, right. you know, you start reading these comments and people are just saying, like, ridiculously funny things. And and also things that are very accurate. You're like, right, right. Did, they, did they take all this into account? Yeah. Um, it right, feels like guys. a concept. Think- yeah. I think this is done. Oh, sweet. oh, lovely! You should play like a weird like ta-da song yeah. or something. I don't know. We could do that on that kalimba behind you if you'd like. Open the mantle. Oh, look at that. Piano. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That's it. I feel like a. Uh, that's the. That's, 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 <laughs> that's it. We got it. <laughs> That's yeah, your new intro and outro music. Time, like, put, play, like, um, okay, so that was like a Mr. Rogers kind of like, <laughs> yeah, right. entrance. It was nice. It was sweet. I liked it. So I'm gonna switch over to this camera. You guys can come back here and see it, cool. and um, I'm gonna take your seat. Okay. And I'm gonna drink this whiskey. <laughs> Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Okay. So I think this one was cemented uh, early on with the figures. So I got... I got a very moody painting. Yeah. Because I had a lot of time to work with the large brush work. Uh, I only only really used one brush um, for the majority of this painting. So... That's my favorite when I get to do that. This yeah. is really cool. that was, I really like the awesome. color choice too of like the range of the color. Yeah. Thanks. I look very muscular in this. But yeah, this is a great I love it. I think it's super cool. I love, this the the mask almost looks like a dog is coming out of Oh yeah. Shrubbery. It's very, it's and the bottle looks yeah. really good. Yeah. <laughs> the bottle yeah, looks like really the good. That's a fun part. Yeah, that's awesome. You did a great job. Super Thanks. cool. I didn't yeah. realize that you like had a still of us, so that makes it pretty. Oh, nice I didn't even look at that. Maybe two times. Yeah. Yeah, I painted this uh, ninety ninety eight percent from life. So I just have that as a Love sort of safety reference. in case you know in case something happens to if someone sure. has to jump out and run oh, out. Oh yeah, I still get to finish the painting. Smart emergency. Yeah. Smart. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. Wow. Okay, man, I can't believe you did it so fast, too. Neither, neither can I. I'm, I'm learning to uh, to whittle them down to uh, the most important parts. Right, right, yeah. Each episode, I think that's really the... That's you know, probably a great that's, skill that's, in general. That's the best thing, you know, in relation to painting that's coming right, up for yeah. me. The other best thing is, you know... What matters? Learning how to communicate with human beings. Mm. 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 Mm.